bass. Yep, we got a bass. There we go. Got a bass. All right. That is cool. Hey, everybody. It's Jay Ball, Blue Jays Outdoors. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I've only got a couple hours. It's getting dark. Probably it's about maybe 5 o'clock. So I only have about an hour and a half maybe or so to fish. But what I want to do today was talk about basic electronics for ice fishing. I know it can be really intimidating when you're first getting into ice fishing. I know when I first got into it really hardcore maybe about 10 years ago, there was not as many options as there are today. So what I want to do is just kind of break down for you the most basic uh, electronic you probably need to have in your arsenal, plus a little bit more advanced. And we'll talk about some other options out there as, as well. So let me just show you guys what I use with me all the time. And let's try to break down and make sense of all this crazy nonsense when it comes to ice fishing electronics. Stay tuned, you guys are not gonna wanna miss this episode. Okay, so this is a piece of equipment that I that never leaves home without me. Like if I go ice fishing and I don't have this Hummingbird Ice 35 flash with me, I will just not even go fishing. I mean, even though I've got a camera, which we're going to talk about, this has been my go-to electronic for probably at least, I would say, 10 years. It's a pretty basic and simple setup. I'll kind of walk you guys through how to use it. So you got the transducer in the water. It's actually behind the hole. I like to have it not in the same hole that I'm fishing in just because I don't want the line to get wrapped around it. But what you've got here is you've got these, these different functions or these different depths, okay? So you've got 1x, 2x, 4x, 10x, and those relate to the dial here on the center, okay? So when you first turn it on and you're at this 1x, you're looking at this white outside dial, okay? So what you want to look for is hard bottom. Now I know hard bottom here is about 15 to 16 feet so if you look right here you can see this really hard red line that's bottom anything above that is fish so there's basically fish from 14 feet right down to about bottom it can be kind of hard to tell with weeds and it's really hard to tell actually through the camera because it's rotating a little bit differently but if you increase this to times two now you move to this inside dial here so now you're on this yellow dial if you turn it one more time you're into this white dial here and then if you turn it one more time you're into the super dial here so now you're you know basically our depth is right here this is times four so you can see you can get pretty deep but that's just kind of the basic functions to get your get your started or yourself started if you push down and hold this beam button it actually shows you the battery life so you can see the battery life it's still full which we'll talk about that in a second and then you've got your zoom and you've got your gain and then you've got your noise. So your noise is what you want to adjust if there's other people with fish finders that are close by. I typically set this thing once and don't mess around with it. Your zoom is you can actually zoom in on certain areas. I tend to keep it zoomed out. And yeah, your gain, you can just kind of play with this as you see fit. But one of the dials that you definitely want to mess with is this top one here. So this is kind of your sensitivity. You can increase it where you can decrease it so you can see the fish and you can see your lure dropping down. So that's kind of some of the basic functions. Let's drop a lure down and actually show you guys what it looks like when you're dropping it down and when the fish come up and eat it. So for this presentation, I'm just gonna use this Marmuska jig with a wax room because it's big and it's easy to see on the flasher. Again, I apologize, it's a little uh, clunky looking on the camera, but in real person, it looks a lot different. So we're first gonna just start dropping this bait down and you should start to see it flash somewhere there it is and I can see it it's right there it's about six foot down so we're just gonna keep dropping this down until we get to the fish themselves and you can see that we're right about on top of them okay there so now I'm in it so I all that stuff inside of there that's all fish so I'm just gonna jig this a little bit and see if we can't get one of these guys to bite these are kind of little oh look at that first drop and that's why I never leave home without this so not a giant, but there you go. Now you can see why it's so important to have a flasher. Again, really basic, great place to start, fairly inexpensive, you know, maybe uh, 200 bucks, I think. There's other brand of manufacturers out there. There's a lot of different companies. I've just used this Hummingbird for the price. It was hard for me to beat. One big upgrade that you guys can do to these things is add a lithium battery. So let me walk around to the backside here and show you guys this amped lithium battery, okay? That was a big upgrade. I've been using this fish finder for over two months. And look at, I even added a secondary USB charging port so I can charge my camera. And guys, this thing is still on full. I mean, I've been using this thing a ton this year and the battery still hasn't drained. So that's just kind of a quick breakdown of this Hummingbird Ice 35 flasher. Again, absolute game changer. If you're just getting ice fishing, it's a great place to start. Now let's take a look at the AquaView camera that I have. 
Now the AquaView camera is, is a little bit of an upgrade. So this is the 715C and you guys can actually see some fish down there right now, I think. Yeah, there you go. So I've got the camera actually on this tripod. I definitely re recommend the tripod. It's got a remote control on it. So I can actually can turn the camera left and right and I can see my bait down there. But what I might do is actually flip the shanty over so you guys can actually take a look and see this better. But it's really nice to have one of these cameras because you can actually see how the fish react while you're jigging. Un you know, with the flasher, you're just kind of guessing to see what they're doing. But here you can see if they suck it in all the way, if they spit it back out. So let's flip the hood of the shanty over and let's try to give you guys a better look at actually what it looks like when the fish are in the camera versus what they look like in the flasher. All right, I'm going to zoom in on the camera. So I'm dropping this Marmuska jig down, okay? And this is like watching TV. This is like my favorite video game ever. So we're gonna drop this jig down. You should see it pass by the camera here in just a second, maybe. I'm trying to miss it myself. Might have just missed it. Okay, I'm on bottom, so I'm just gonna reel it up. I know the camera's lined up with it. Yep, there it is. So now you can see my jig. You can see all the fish coming up after it. Look at that, that is crazy. So like I said, the nice thing is you can actually see them inhale it all the way. Let's see if I can't get a really up close view of that. It's kind of funny. It's like the best television and the funnest game ever. So you can see them come firing in. And these are just little guys. I mean, I'm not out here. I know I'm probably not gonna get any to keep, but I just want to kind of show you guys how fun it can be with a camera. And it's really cool. You can see bass come in. I saw some big perch come in earlier this year. You can see big pike come in. So you can see how it looks a little bit different on the flasher compared to the actual camera. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Let's see if we can't catch one. So these guys are being kind of picky. So I'm going to drop this thing in the bottom. Here's a little trick for you. Drop right to the bottom. Okay, I'm going to smash it on the bottom a couple times, stir up some sediment. And these fish like to chase, so they see that sediment down there getting stirred up. They think it's potentially a bug. So once I hit bottom, I'm just going to start slowly reeling it up. And a lot of times that will cause the fish to hit there. You can see the jig coming up. And sometimes they will follow this thing way up in the water column. Um, it's kind of crazy just how far up they'll follow this thing. But you can see we've got one looking at it. Oh, it looks like a bass. Yep, we've got a bass. There we go. Got a bass. All right. That is cool. You guys get to see that live action. Look at that. There we go. There's a bass for you. Let's flip the flip the hood of the shanty over so you guys can see that. That was perfect. That is awesome. That is why it's so fun to have one of these AquaView cameras. Oh, hook just came out. We'll get this fish back in the water. And I think we'll uh, we'll get back to fishing. Bye-bye. Maybe. Oh, there he goes. Bye-bye maybe there he went down and how awesome was that to see that bass come up and eat that bait one of these cameras if you guys can afford it or justify it there's so much fun again i have uh, the same amp lithium battery in the aquaview camera as well and guys it's it's pretty straightforward to use i can show you here real quick you've got the battery uh amount is up here You've got a LED brightness. You've got a menu with a couple different options, but it's really straightforward use, pretty easy. So you really can't go wrong with either a flasher or a camera. I never leave home without this flasher. Now there are, you know, the, the side imaging, um, you know, I'm not gonna name names, but there's a ton of different side imaging stuff. That is next level. Those are super expensive units. You're talking a couple thousand dollars. Yes, they're super nice to have, but you can see you can catch fish with either just a flasher or a camera. I would like to have side imaging one day so then I can see you know, a lot farther around me, but this stuff ain't paying the bills. Not yet. Maybe one day with your guys' help, hopefully we can get there. So hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on basic ice fishing electronics. If you guys got any questions, you know, be sure to leave them in the comment section. Leave a thumb up, a thumbs up. It really helps drive this content through the algorithm. I cannot thank you guys enough for your support. We're getting really close to a thousand followers. Hopefully, we'll be there before open water season this spring. But again, I cannot thank you guys enough for all your support. And remember, the easiest way to change your attitude is by showing gratitude. Thanks, and we'll catch you in the water next time.